Hello all, this video will show you how to use the Eris diffractometer made by Malvern Panalytical. You'll notice that there are three spots here for samples and three spots here for samples. These correspond to three circles up top on the left and three circles up top on the right, so each circle corresponds to a sample position. I'm going to take my sample and put it in this first position. At that point, we see a question mark appear on the screen in the first position circle. Had I placed a sample in a different sample position, this little question mark would have appeared in one of these other circles, and we would just touch that circle to go to that position. Let's go back to our first position. Here is where we can select our measurement program, so we will click the little down arrow. You'll see here I have a list of different programs. If you need to scroll, click on this scroller bar and go up and down. Now, for my lab, I ask that if there is a program here that is close to what you would normally use, please use that program. I am trying to not have everyone make programs with minor differences, which would then make this a massively long list. If you need something that is drastically different from what you see on this list, let me know so that I can make a new one for you. That's fine. For today, I'm going to use this silicon full ultra quick scan down here at the bottom. So I'll click that. Now we just need to type in the sample ID. You can use the keyboard here, or there is a keyboard at the base of the Eris. That is something that we added. I prefer to type on a physical keyboard. So I will name this YouTube example one. Once we do that, we can simply add to queue. So let's do that. We will see the little arm come over, grab the sample, load it into the next arm, which will then load it inside. One thing I want to point out is that if you took another sample and placed it in that same spot that the sample loaded from, you get a little red exclamation point in that sample holder position to let you know that you need to remove it right away. We could put our next sample in this next position. Come over here. I've already set this up for the second sample. And then add it to the queue. And you see scheduled. So once this one is done, it will be unloaded and the next sample will run. We are still on the screen for the first sample. We see the diffraction pattern. Whenever your sample finishes collecting, I ask that you click this next measurement button down here on the bottom right. That clears this out and gets it set up for the next sample. We see that there is a yellow circle there for the second position, so that means that something is running there. So we will click that. We see the data collecting. Down here on the bottom, we see the remaining time for the experiment. We also see on the bottom right the abort button, so if you need to stop it early, you can click that. It should save whatever data collected up to that point. We also see that there is a yellow circle here up top. That just means that there is a sample in the chamber running. You'll notice that when there is no sample running, the circle disappears. Let's go ahead and stop the measurement. There is a little red exclamation point just because we stopped measuring. I'll click next measurement just to clear that screen out. You see that we have two question marks up there because I haven't removed my samples yet and the Eris is waiting for me to enter information for a new experiment. If I take out the second one and then take out the first one, you see that those question marks went away. Let's see about transferring data. In my lab, we have it set up so that there is an external computer that we can copy data to and perform all of our analysis with Highscore Plus. I will click these three little lines in the top left corner, and we see some options here. If you want to transfer data, you want to go to Data Management. We see the folder that it will be sent to on the computer. Here we see the from and to dates. These will determine what files are shown here. If you don't see your data here in this window, it's probably because this to date is incorrect. 
So you just click on the down button and select the present date. At this point, you can click individual files. We see here two items are selected. We could say none, I'll go back to that. If we wanted to take all of them, we can select all. It highlights all of them, whoops. And then it says two items selected. All we need to do then is simply click copy results. Because this button was activated, the files will be removed from the ARIS after copying to the computer. That's what we want to do because I don't want this to be loaded up with a bunch of files. After you've copied your data from the ARIS to the computer, you can come down here, click on the folder, and make sure you choose this XRD data folder. You should then see a list of names. For this video, I've hidden most of them except for two folders just to protect the names of our users. Down here at the bottom, you see the two samples that we just collected. I will select both of those and drag them up into my folder. Every morning, I check the ARIS, and if there are any files left on there, I copy them over here. If there are any of those files or any other files down here that haven't been organized yet, I will copy those up into this unorganized files folder at the top. So if you forget to copy your data and are looking for it, look up there. As always, I thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.